This man made the transition from Walmart stalker to federal employee in under 100 days. I met this young fellow. We'll call him Rob. He spent three years in the Navy. After he got out, he spent a couple of more years at Walmart being a stalker in Virginia. He didn't know what else to do. So I asked Rob, I said, hey, what experiences do you have? And he says, not really much. I was a mechanic in the Navy, and then I've been doing some work at Walmart. Mainly, he was unloading trucks, stocking shelves, and assisted in setting up floor plans. At Walmart, he was making about $19 an hour, which is like $36,000 a year. And I asked him, what type of salary are you looking for when you transition into the government? And he says, you know, around $35,000, $40,000 should be fine. I said, wait a minute, Rob, you're setting the bar too low. Looking at your experience, clearly you should be able to get in at around a GS9 or even a GS11. Listen, we have to stop underselling ourselves. Do not diminish or undermine the experience that you have attained. So the pay grade target was between GS9 and GS11. And the job series was 0301. And we pretty much looked anywhere in the 0300 series as long as his experience matched up. We changed his resume to focus largely on achievements. And it turned out while he was in the Navy, he was ordering a lot of parts on the computer. So he was inputting data and analyzing information when those parts actually arrived. We started applying June 21st. And I told him, hey, listen, you need to apply to at least three jobs a day at a minimum. As long as the job series was 0300, he needed to look and read the qualification section to see if it matched his experience. In total, he submitted 80 job applications, resulting in 48 referrals and six interviews. For the scope of the search, we opened it up to any federal agency around the Richmond, Virginia area at the pay grades of GS9 to GS11. Now, keep in mind, it took about five weeks for any interviews to come in. And this is a part a lot of people struggle with. The interviews can take a long while to come in. Sometimes it can be months. So what people often do is they apply a few times, they do not see results, and they take a step back, they quit, and they say, hey, this isn't for me. Because they can't see any progress being made. Once the first interview request came in, within the next 10 days, we received multiple interview requests. In total, we had two from the Department of Transportation, one from the Department of Defense, and three from the Department of Veteran Affairs. Out of the six interviews, he received two job offers. Now, four out of the six interviews were virtual. He was able to do them at home, but he had a confidence issue. We have imposter syndrome sometimes. When we're moving from industries, he's moving from Walmart and he's trying to work for the federal government. Oftentimes we think to ourselves, maybe I'm not qualified. Maybe I'm not the right type of person they're looking for. You need to get all that stuff out of your head, okay? The interview panel will make that decision. You need to focus on selling yourself and presenting your value so that they can make that determination. The best way to overcome this is by doing it over and over again, rehearsing, standing in the mirror, having a friend or a relative to practice interviewing with, or saying it in front of a camera and watching yourself and then improving, finding areas where you can refine your technique, memorizing those success stories and practice articulating your value. A tentative job offer came in with the Department of Veteran Affairs for a GS-11 program specialist position on September 6th. He signed on to USA Jobs, clicked accept, and in about five days, he had the majority of the paperwork completed. A few days after it was complete, another job offer came in from the Department of Transportation as a GS9 program analyst. He rejected that offer, which is against my advice because I believe you should accept all tentative job offers because you never know what's going to happen and another offer can come in that's even better. Fortunately, a final job offer came in September 26th and he accepted it. Rob went from a $36,000 a year salary to a $68,000 a year salary, which is what a GS-11 Step 1 makes in Richmond, Virginia. That is a 52% salary increase. And to think he would have never done this if he did not consider working a federal government job. All too often, we're stuck in these small or medium-sized towns, and we think the best that we can get is the local department store and we resign ourselves to have a lower paying job. The key is a focused job search, a resume, and the persistence to keep applying. Not only does he have an increase in salary, but now he's working towards a pension. He has benefits. He's growing his TSP. He went from stocking shelves at midnight at a Walmart to executing correspondence to assist individuals in the veteran affairs. 
Now he can start saving and building towards a better future. These kind of stories, they fire me up because this is life changing. And every time I get a message on YouTube or through the email or social networking and someone says, hey, thank you, your content helped me get a better job. Or I just started my first day and there's a picture of them smiling. That stuff warms my heart. It is unbelievable the impact that you can actually make just by talking into a camera. Now, you probably heard that getting federal employment is pretty difficult. In fact, less than 4% every year actually get into the government compared to those who apply. If you wanna know why it's so hard for people to get into the government, then I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.